Hello, guys. <laughs> oh, God, I'm really loud in my ear for some reason. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome, Welcome back. back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just get those brain farts, you know, where oh, I've done you that don't, so many times. You don't even like realize that you don't have your microphone on as you're starting everything. Hello everybody. I'm Capitalist, joined by Turka for our game number two here. The next one is gonna be Stark GG versus Dota 2. Uh, we'll call them Dota 2 and I. Uh, this is actually a little bit of SFZ, a little bit of Navi, Axmo's in there as well. And the Roman. Yeah, and Roman as okay. well. It's kinda <laughs> all over the place. So uh, real quickly, I'll just take a look at the bracket. As you can see, uh, we've got Stark versus Dota 2 NI. That'll be the winner facing up against Team Empire. After that, we've got CIS Rejects versus NLG, and then Team Bad English versus uh, Alliance. So, uh, we're gonna jump into well, our uh, our f second game of the night here. Give Quarter us the finals, ahoy! And we've got a uh, first pick, Night Stalker. It's kind of interesting. It's a CIS team, dude. Yeah. If it, it's I mean, if this interesting was that like they don't get Tusk, I mean, that's the one kind of question. Why, why Night Stalker and not Tusk, right? Yeah, remaining. that that is actually because for me, I feel like Tusk is Five very much OP remaining. right now. Uh, that 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 hero, I feel like needs to needs to be nerfed. I mean, I love Tusk because he fits into that that perfect position for me where it's like you can play him as an off lane, but then if you get like asshole teammates who are like, no, I take off lane. And <laughs> then you're able to fall back on that like four position you support can, that roams around. You can play around. mid, you can play him carry. You yeah, know? I, he goes anywhere, man. He goes where he wants. It all works out. But uh, Night Stalker does have some serious advantages of his own uh, in the same vein that you can uh, operate as both the off laner as well as that kind of four position. There's even mid Night Stalker, so um, I think I've only seen that once recently. Night Stalker obviously has his own big time advantages mm -hmm. such as the vision game, which is pretty important going on uh, later on, which I think is the big boost to having him as a four position is that if you are able to get that kind of farm to pick up an Aghanim Scepter, boy, you should have some serious late game advantage just purely through that. Uh, but meanwhile, Stark have actually picked up a uh, nice combination with themselves, Darkseer and Jakiro, uh, and then the Queen of Pain and Spirit Picker, just strong laning heroes between those two. But it's the Darkseer and Jakiro that interests me the most. Oh yeah, you've, you've got the Darkseer Spirit Breaker. Oh god. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I don't know what, what to say about that. <laughs> we have a Chaos Knight. We saw No, they, they like first banned Wisp. I still like, go back for it. Yeah, they, they don't even like consider leaving Wisp open in the pool. They're just like, yeah, we're gonna we're actually going to intentionally make sure we can't do Wisp Chaos Knight and still go for Wisp Chaos or with. Well, we did Chaos see this Knight. from Scary Faces during the defense when Shadow Wave, Shadow Wave was still playing with them. Uh huh. Where they really didn't want their opponents to get the Wisp. Oh, yeah, I they remember still, that. They still wanted the Chaos Knight. Yeah. And they just ran at you. But it's it's a weird one. Like, I get, you know, Chaos Knight, he can be judged on his own merits. You know, he's still a very good hero. He's got displacement in Reality Rift. He's got a, a good mm -hmm. stun. But I think the fact that he's so RNG. No, based. Yep. Not just his spells, but also his base damage as well. That the wisp there able to move him around the map is such a vital component of the hero itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. A limited mana pool is an issue yeah. for him. Like he's pretty heavy mana costing in spells. Um, we need many arcane boots. There, there is the recent change up of chaos strike that uh, we probably want to talk about, which I believe is um, a big time buff for him. Um, the slight critical damage negation is like 25%, not a big deal, in exchange for uh, a minus 5 point. armor. Yeah, like that's that's really cool, and it actually works out really well with heroes like Wind Ranger, potentially if they're going on the same target. Uh, the Ember Spirit, though, is now picked up for Stark GG, so there is a hero. I was, I was going to you know question if they're going to get something else that works with the, the Darkseer combination. You know, I was looking, you know, thinking Gyrocopter, but of course that was banned away. Um, but Ember Spirit, you know, obviously with Slide of Fist, Battle Fury, you can take advantage of the Ice Path Vacuum combo. And they've got so much mobility here as well. Seconds, Remnants, really? Charge, Blink, Surge, there's just so many things that can get them not only into a fight onto a target like, you know, a Wind Ranger who's pretty quick on her feet, and Night Stalker can jump around as well, or mm -hmm. uh, sprint around during the night time, but also disengaging. Looks pretty good for Stark. 
Last pick for uh, for D2 IN. Chaos Knight, I'm guessing one roll. Wind Ranger mid. Lena Night Stalker. I'm still unsure. I think Night Stalker is going to be heading towards the off lane. They a silencer here would be good for them for like overall game plan, but I'm just worried about laning phase because right now the Chaos Knight can be put under a decent amount of pressure by the Dark Seer alone. Never what about mind the Dark Seer um, Spirit Breaker dual lane. You need some extra disables, right? Yeah. Like, in order to catch the Ember Spirit. For me, I immediately thought Disruptor. I really like it versus both Queen of Pain and Ember Spirit. But um, then I think a hero that actually would be very nice Weaver. is the... Um, all right. Four-position Night Stalker. That, yep. that would be really nice, Durka, if we had a four-position Night Stalker and we went for a different core, and that would be the Weaver. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect that one. I was actually thinking Bane. <laughs> Uh, you know, Bane is a good controlling hero, but also sets up Alina very nicely. But here we're going to get more physical damage, more minus armor. And this is really where the meta is going right now, is that everybody seems to enjoy the multi-core strategies in this patch. Having three different cores that all can scale into the late game in some regard. And this one, it's pretty clear that they actually have a, I would say, a rather large advantage if they go late game. Unless, like, you know, some of their cores are just so out of it that they can't actually be viable. How do they lane game? this, though? Uh, I'm presuming it's going to be Night Stalker Weaver Bottom, uh, Lena Chaos Knight, right? Because the Chaos Knight um, serves Set as a setup, yeah. I'm just so trying to figure out who does, like, who does best against Darks here. And Spirit Breaker. And you know how we used to see Queen yeah. of Pain against these sort of dual lanes or aggressive tri lanes and things mm -hmm. like that just to escape with your blink away? Mm -hmm. And then obviously it's pretty good with Shadow Strike, just harass out these relatively tanky melee heroes and trade hits pretty efficiently. Hmm. If you run yeah. some kind of aggressive dual lane with Chaos Knight leaning down towards bottom, and then have like Night Stalker roaming between top and mid, and have the Weaver semi solo up at top lane. Mm hmm. I'm just trying to handle that lane. You know, leech experience, get a little bit farm. Oh, are we having super, super server issues again tonight? I guess so. Dota 2. Um, I'm a little bit torn here because I know, like, there's this amazing amount of offensive power in the Chaos Knight Lena combination. It feels like a waste to uh, lane that up against the Spirit Breaker Darkseer, which yeah. you probably shouldn't kill. So, and then putting the Weaver against the, you know, Darkseer seems quite favorable. Um, and then the Night Stalker, I'm not sure, like, maybe they run an aggro try? Night Stalker, I don't feel Night Stalker works in tri lanes, but... I, I feel like you actually do want to run Lena and Chaos Knight against the Ember Spirit in the lane. Yeah. Because you have such an immense amount of kill power there. And you stop him from farming. Yeah, you shut him down from farming. If the Wind Ranger does all right in his lane, and I'm sure the Weaver will do all right, whether it's the Night Stalker's there or whatever the plan is for the NS. He just stays alive. Yeah, the the Weaver should do better than the Ember Spirit. Let's put it that way. Like we just because like if you get charged, right, you just pop Shikuchi. Yeah. You get hit, but then you have chance to run away afterwards. Like we have seen, <laughs> we have seen aggro trials with Night Stalkers before from CIS teams. I think. More notably, like Moscow 5 and Screen Squad, where they'd run Pugna, Wind Ranger, Night Stalker, and have two ranged heroes that can spam harass and just launch these magic projectiles out and have the Night Stalker to chase as well. But if you're running Chaos Knight plus Night Stalker and the Lena, eh, I'm not sure. You know, you've got some stuns, you've got displacement, and a good amount of damage, but it's just clunky, I think, is, is, the, is the way to look at it. The Night Stalker doesn't offer you... He doesn't offer you much more in the lane than you already have with the CK Lena without taking away the experience you would gain to get into, you know, your level 2 and level 3, which obviously amplifies your power of killing uh, by quite quite a good amount. But is this going to be Quop's safe lane, actually, it looks like? Nemfi's picked up yeah. the Ember Spirit and has the PMS. I was thinking about that, that if you know that they're going to run some sort of aggro try or aggro dual lane, you probably put the Queen of Pain bottom. But that doesn't necessarily ensure that it's a good lane for the quap because if you get caught by one stun and it's a decent duration you're probably dead because then the lena follows that up with the light strike array there's the a lot of physical damage coming out from that chaos knight the level one crippling fear <laughs> <laughs> level 
for one crab. Yeah. <laughs> what, how, how much? Uh, three. Three seconds during daytime? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, if you get the crippling fear at the end of the stun chain, three seconds of silence to get you, you know, four or five auto hits in is probably worth more than the damage and slow from Void. Yeah, probably. But it's, it's super situational. Still waiting every, ever, ever, ever since Reborn, everyone's rocking donkeys. You realize that? Yeah, it it's was because because no one's actually gone in and like because the armory system is all funky and stuff. It was broken for the first month or so where you couldn't change it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't think anyone's bothered to go back. It's just uh, it's just donkey time. Everyone sold all of their careers. I did recently. I really like my career. What's yours? The lockjaw. Yeah, the lockjaw from uh, TI2. Yeah. It's worth a lot of money. I traded my lockjaw like for the Drodo. I like to flaunt my money in front of the pubs. <laughs> I get all yeah, the time. Can, yeah, congrats. You won the game. You got 25 MOR, but I've got $250 in my courier. <laughs> There's people with <laughs> thousands of dollars worth of freaking Dota 2 inventory. It's ridiculous. What, what are you looking at? What in the... Ah! Where is that? Where what, is, what is happening to techies? Where are you? I feel like this is some sort of nightmare image. I didn't even notice this at first. Uh -huh. Oh, God. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what? Uh -huh. Wait a second. There's two heads there. Yeah, exactly. There's a head on a head. So both of them are decapitated. Yeah. I feel like we're, we're looking at some sort of Halloween version of the Headless Horseman with techies. Especially with the way he just stares. <laughs> the grin. <laughs> the <laughs> dead-eyed grin of so Techies. So creepy, head. man. <laughs> the fuck? Wow, let's, let's look away from that one. Oh, the, yes. There's butterflies flying in the background. I, is, he, is the other one headless, too? The inscription is the best, though. GG, we lost. Oh, wait. I need to... Let's see. Maybe you can look at it from here. I'm trying to... Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the, yeah, okay. That's because the extra head is from the one that's flying up in the air. Yeah. It just, it just, this, it just this, fell off. Is this spleen? Which one is this? Squee, spleen... And spoon. And spoon. I'm pretty sure spoon's the one in the barrel. Yeah. Spoon wasn't named for a long time. It actually Squee took... Squee and spleen. spleen. It, it took someone on Is it spleen or spleen? Squee, spleen, and spoon. I, it is spleen, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But wouldn't it make more sense if it was splee? I don't know. It, like spleen is a body <laughs> part, you know. It just it kind of feels kind of weird. Like a, a like squee is some sort of squee. noise. I exp I I'd imagine like splee would be some sort of noise too, instead of like spleen. <laughs> like yeah, it's it it has the general same kind of like overall vocal aesthetics. I don't know as is squee, but. There's definition to it. it. Makes it weird. Oh, RMN. The German guy on a team of Russians <laughs> and <laughs> Ukrainians. Russians. Oh, dear. Uh, emo Boy 89. What a name Trixie has. Lovely stuff. Someday, Durka. So someday we'll live in a world where professional players actually put their real names. One day. <laughs> One day. But yeah, before Reddit. People went to play Dota to whine. And techies used to just be called uh, Squee and Spleen. Begins. And then they realized there were legs in the barrel. What? Didn't, steal it. Didn't quite get it. So. The split between the battle runes. Spear Breaker takes uh, one of them, though, and that's a uh, big downside. It's As aggro try. Nemphi is going to be matched up against a Wind Ranger with uh, half a level on him. And they are going to be running the aggro try. Interesting. How many mangoes do they have? Because that's usually indicative of how you uh, how you win an aggro try. Th they've got one mango. And that's so just rocking boots first. And they're going to go on to OKC. Uh, uh, they will land their light strike array. The problem is, this is Jakiro. He's got a high amount of HP. I'm not sure you actually kill he him dies. here. Or maybe he do. Yeah, he does. I thought maybe Valix would come in and put Bashes. a stop to this one. But he doesn't have a charge. Instead, he went for Bash. And what? oh, Jesus. Good Lord. Oh that bash took him out. Now RMN's going to come in and get some one-second stun onto uh, the Queen of Pain. Not quite enough to slow him down, though. 
And uh, they don't have Void just yet. Now they're going to go into Shadow A. They do still have a Blink. Do you feel confident, though? No. Boogie? Not really feeling it. Instead, just get some more damage on RMN. With Lina alive and uh, Chaos Knight having a Mango, there's no way you Blink forward there. It's into your own death, pretty much. Yeah. This is left in, uh, so the matchup here is in Ember Spirit versus Wind Ranger, which is not particularly favorable for uh, the Ember Spirit, unless it's Wind not. Ranger misses a lot of her early harassment, such as that power shot. Yeah, it's, it's not that bad for the Ember with a poor man shield. You know, yeah. you're, you're still going to get harassed, you're not going to have a free farm lane. And you could see he's prepared for the harassment he's going to be taking. Two shared tangos and two healing salves. So he, he knows what's up. Figures, as long as you survive through the first, like, three levels and still have, like, a decent amount of regen, you're looking pretty the good. Alright, man, Grease, Valix, calm down. He is a bashing machine right now. He's got brown boots and bashes. That's all he's given. <laughs> well, I guess Nemphi knows there's not going to be support <laughs> rotations, right? Because everyone's committed to the bottom lane. They're going to go in on the Spirit Breaker. I'm, I'm not sure he dies here, though. Maybe he could have charged away, but still LSA gets him. Axmo taking some damage here. Does have Shukuchi. If Emo Bo Oh, okay, God, yeah. Trixie actually gets him. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. That is not supposed to happen at all. Darkseer picks up the kill on the on the Weaver. With a salve and soul ring. I couldn't even say Weaver at first because it was it's a hero that I haven't said the name of for so long. I wanted I like I was struggling with saying Wyvern. <laughs> and I was, like, you know, because Wyvern's in every single game, practically, yeah. and no, no. Weaver. What a hero. Not the greatest debut of this hero, though. I know we've seen it in the patch before, but... Wait, which one's which one's art style? Because it's the Lena, right? Yeah, I believe so. I can't remember the name of the Wind Ranger. It's Untouchable or something. It was a name I didn't recognize. Mm. Anyway, what what what's what's happening in this bottom lane? Who's winning? <laughs> I don't even no, know. Nobody's winning. It's uh, just a mess. Uh, the, like the fact that they killed RMN, I think means that Stark is winning. A kill that really should not happen, but seventeen percent. The bashes are real. Yeah. And now it's difficult to kill the quap. Just because of these supports sitting around and I'll pull through, make sure lane equilibrium gets dragged back. Then we've got a good lane ward actually watching out for the movements of these guys as well. i have just got to keep the pressure on. Like, they should be contesting this pull through right now. Knowing that it's happening, maybe catching up the Jakiro. But they're stuck in this quandary where they're falling back from the creep wave. They're not getting last hits. They're not applying pressure to the supports when they are pulling. And now they come in. It's, it's a little bit late. Jakiro was given time to reset and now move across. Valix was potentially looking to... Charge onto the Chaos Knight there. Radiance top tower is under attack. And in the meantime, Darks here, 30 last hits. And none of these are jungle creeps, right? This is just all lane. Does Shadow A stay in lane here? I don't think he does. I think he should probably roam into middle lane. Right? Before you get level 6 on the Emerald Spirit, it's the only time that you're really going to have... Um, because you're running this aggro trialing, the concern for me is that if the Night Stalker goes the traditional build, and I'm not sure you can. Stun goes on to Queen of Pain. One second stun. Light Shark actually misses there because of the pullback. The Queen of Pain will be able to get out now. They're actually going on a Shadow A, but unfortunately they don't have enough uh, moving speed, but maybe they can go on to RMN. No. He's one step ahead as well. Chaos Knight. Quite the fast hero. But if you move the Night Stalker towards mid, you lose all of your aggressive potential on bot. And... Oh, oh. Okay, okay, and the Darkseer dies. Axmo making up for uh, the mistakes he made earlier. The charge comes out, and they will be able to go on art style here and get that kill. The turn around onto the Queen of Pain, though. They will be able to get that one. A good uh, ultimate goes down to dual breath. And Jakiro ensuring the kill on a shadow away. Oh, my God. He actually lived for 4 HP. Now the turn around. Okay, see him misses the ice path. Oh. Valix desperately trying to get it. He gets the charge. Shadow away is dead because of that one. RMN's going to try and catch up. He does have some wand charges, but not enough for a Chaos Bolt. Not yet anyway, but they do have on the side Wind Ranger ready to go with the Shackle Shot. Now Valix has been caught. The Light Strike Array is going to miss the stun. Oh, right as he tries to go for the charge, Valix gets caught and will end up going down off the back of that three-second stun. What, what are we witnessing, honestly? It's all-out aggression from these two teams. 
The rather... one lane that hasn't seen any kills is mid, right? The Wind Ranger okay moves across, but that's that's a bot lane kill on the night on the uh, Spirit Breaker. Yeah, that's just her allowing facilitating the bottom lane to get another kill. I don't know. Five to six right now. It's six minutes in, and Stark seemed to have an experience lead ever so slight while uh, Dota Two and I sent in about a five hundred gold lead. Nothing major either way. We need to start thinking about stacks and things like that for the Ember Spirit, though. Some way to get him up and running. Because he's definitely a mid or carry hero that needs that, you know, initial burst of gold income to get him into the travels and then push forward into... Uh, I, I'm guessing he goes Manta style here. I don't know if you've got the space, time, or inclination to go Battle Fury after your BOTs. Mm -hmm. And maybe even think about the Aquila and Drums Dyer's build. Because you definitely need stats up against the silences and stuns coming out of the Dire. So Nemphi's got a long road ahead of him. Charge coming out from the side. If they get the right charge right as they start playing aggressive or with the TP, they're actually going to be able to bash up the Night Stalker on the way in. They hit RMN. They go into the Queen of Pain, but Amber Spirit has locked down the Night Stalker in the process, and they're going to go for that easy kill. Now Axmo shows himself missing out there. They do hit the Light Strike array, and it looks like because of that, RMN's going to be able to combo it up, and Valix will end up being taken out as a return kill. One for one exchange. This does leave Trixie, though, at the top lane, ready to push. Five heroes bot. Let's go, boys. But Excellent. they're not even going to be able to take a tier one tower off of that. It feels like the advantage is to Stark because of the room that Trixie's getting. I mean, Nemphi teleported to the bottom lane, but he's, you know, very rapidly able to get back to the middle lane and continue farming, where top lane, a lot more time lost for uh, Axmo's Weaver. Okay, bottom lane. Chaos Knight goes down. They didn't even need level 6. Not sure what that was all about. Lena battling out with Nemphi apparently for this rune or not. Nemphi concedes the bounty rune to the Lena. Meanwhile, Shadow A is going to be no, not chased away. He's actually going to turn on a Trixie right now. Some major back and forth between these guys. Oh, Sir, there's a stun. TP Void. out. Void actually stops, and now the Light Strike Array should be able to land, and Trixie is definitely dead here with the I silence. He's fighting it out with the Ion Shell, and Lena may actually go down, but he misses out on the wall, and he dies to the Void. Volix, though, comes in and finishes off the Lena, making sure to walk away from that explosion. Meanwhile, Belt of Lane. Weaver kills off the Chikira. All right. <laughs> If these, te the, if these two teams could kind of get on the same page about what's supposed to happen in these laning phase, can, I would appreciate it. Can you just go all mid, five man mid, or, you know... Yeah, at least at least make the action a little bit easier for me to follow, because... Is that the point uh, where you God. just say, 5v5 rush pit? Yeah, let's go, boys. Uh, that might be the answer. Sort it out. I'm still trying to get a grasp on where this game's heading, because... Okay, the dire. Oh. oh god. Yeah, they're gonna try and go on the Wind Ranger, but the charge is canceled. They back out. They forced a TP, and that's good enough for them. So I feel like the Radiant. Okay, they've got the Ember Spirit and Dark. They're farming really nicely, but the threshold for them to reach to become, you know, viable heroes that go in battle is a little bit higher. It feels than the dire because Dark here needs his mech. He needs a lot more levels in the vacuum. Needs a, a ton more, and the Ember Spirit, like I was saying, he needs that period of time where he goes from being potentially a battle ember with his like 4-1-4 build with the with mm. the chains and flame guard to actually deal a ton of damage to having items which will allow him to carry through. Over on the Dyer, they're just fully skill set reliant, right? They've got stun slows, they just throw their stuff at you and hope it sticks. You've even got a bracer on the Lena. This is how early game focused they are. They're roaming CK Lena towards the middle lane to look for this ember spirit. Unfortunately, they're not even going to have the opportunity. It was questionable whether or not it would work out, as it is an Ember Spirit, and he's always ready to jump back. But they don't even get the chance to gank him as he goes up to the top rune at the perfect time. They get a DD on the Wind Ranger, but they're going to have to think about going for a dive here. Because they're wasting too much time to not go for some sort of aggressive maneuver. And sure enough, Night Stalker actually popping the knight, and they're gonna go in for this one. Queen of Pain just abandoning the Jakiro, it looks like, and swarm? that's gonna be fine. If that swarm hit the hit the Wind Ranger, uh, hit the Queen of Pain there, the Wind Ranger just goes in with focus fire and kills her. Oh yeah. Now with that, probably go and uh, take that tier one tower, try and even things out for the tower that they gave up earlier to Trixie. Our man just bypasses these two heroes in his own jungle. Nemphi and Valix, both hunting. 
Yeah. Where is Armin going? I'm not sure. I think he's a little bit lost as what to do with this Chaos Knight aggro tri-lane scenario. His rotations so <laughs> aren't working out. He's fallen pretty far behind in farm at this point. Is this like a roaming Chaos Knight now? You just give up yeah, your farm to other so. heroes, I guess. Charge? They're gonna go for it here. Light Strike Array will land perfectly just before the charge. And now Valix, he's probably dead, especially with the TP and the Wind Ranger. Do they have enough damage? That mech actually keeping him alive, and the power shot completely off the mark there. So Wind Ranger. Well, gonna back himself away while Axmo surges himself forward. Heavy rotations once again from the Dota 2 NI team. And this is usually, for me, it's a sign of a team that is perhaps a little bit over eager or like hyper aggressive but i feel like the team that isn't five banning as much as long as they're not getting crushed yeah is the team that's winning out strategically and you're gonna see that coming in you know six seven eight minutes where just like in the last game team empire it was kind of a similar scenario right like they were keeping heroes in their lanes a lot more they were only responding when they had to and as a result they were getting a, uh, especially a big experience advantage and that shows itself when you go into the team fights a bit later on into the game yeah it's, it's the gradual incline over the sort of immediate acceleration and then you hit that critical mass with the mm -hmm. items that you need and all of a sudden come bursting out the gates and uh, i think the fact that valix on support spirit breaker has treads earn and is nearly level six he can actually start to look solo killing people because the lena even with the bracer up you're just going to get crushed by the nether strike charge with an urn on top of you and even the wind ranger you know point booster it's only going to keep you alive for so long tower's falling and i still could denies one down the bottom lane as well I'm waiting for this Spirit Breaker to try and go for the charge on Axmo here. They get the chains, but now the charge. They hit Axmo in the back of the vacuum. No, he managed to get off the ultimate. That brings him back to full HP. Now the Light Striker Ray lands on Valix. They're going to try and go on him with a silence. He's put on a Trixie Shadow A, those force back, but can't retreat as the Spirit Breaker lands that ultimate and bumps him back in. The Shackle Shot lands, but not much. The Dire Side can really do when Stark 5 man. They five man much more successfully, it looks like, than the dire side is. Oh, Chaos They're too hard farming. to kill. Chaos Knight was farming top. He had a TP the entire time, and I was watching for it, just waiting for the CK to TP in, because after all the big AoEs are gone from Stark, that Phantasm could actually shred them. Yeah, especially if you got a uh, little bit lucky, got that extra proc. I mean, Ember Spirit, 950 HP. The eight armor is decent, but still going to get hit and crit down by those illusions. This is the point where Darkseer now is getting really, really beefed up. Arcane's mech Sol Ring, he's got a full magic wand completed. But with four heroes converging on his location, I yeah. don't think he's going to survive much longer. Unless he can search. No, 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 no. Three seconds stun, and Axmo is actually dominating. What started off as feeding weight, was he first blood? I don't think so. But what, what started as him feeding the, uh, the Darkseer, an early kill in the laning phase, Turns him to him now being 4-1. and one. Hasn't died since. And is picking up a lot of farm. I like his aggressive build, though. I'm not... Like, I like the idea behind going in aggressive builds. I'm not sure about the build itself. Is it... Do you think it's correct? Ring of Aquila, Magic Wand. Okay, that's all fine. Treads, sure. Earn a Shadows instead of Medallion. Because we used to see... Uh, and we still do occasionally. Solar Crest. Yeah, we would see... Um, medallions picked up by these heroes like Weaver and Clink, so yeah. they're heavy physical damage that rotate early in order to kind of bump up their sort of early game physical damage output yeah. then maybe go for an early Roshan kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I kind of like this, just the fact that it gives you more stats. You know, you get the strength. Weaver is a really low HP hero. But I don't know. If, if you think about, you know, coupling up with Focus Fire, the damage from the Chaos Knight, that minus armor can mean a hell of a lot. Yeah, and you don't really have a hero that's going to go for it otherwise. Uh, and then maybe the Night Stalker goes for it, but... Yeah, the Urn is usually a Night Stalker item. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, It feels like we're, we're living in the Twilight Zone right now, and these two two heroes have swapped their items. All right, the charge on RMN, but oh, the ultimate goes off at the perfect time. He got a little lucky with the two. He gets off the stun. Volix, Three. he needs a little bit more. Actually gets chained up. Still managed to get off the ultimate. Oh, Queen of Pain almost bursts him down with a nice vacuum. Double kill goes to Trixie. Great shackle shot, but they managed to get the ultimate out from Volix to get the extra kill on top. And there, Axmo? 
Are you thinking about going back in? It looks like he might try and go for a pickoff on Valix or take advantage of the fact that they're diving onto a tier two right now. Shackleshot doesn't latch onto anything, and Wind Ranger does have Wind Run trying to get out the Ion Shell. Oh, nope, not quite enough damage. And Axmo actually just went for the Bounty Rune instead, realizing that that's not going to be an opportunity for him to go for a quick pickoff. Yeah, and here's the situation that Dio are in. Like you were saying, the patience from Stark is starting to really pay off. They've got the level three vacuum, the level two wall. This Doctor has hit one of his, you know, uh, biggest power spikes at this point. The Queen of Pain is still a little bit behind, but she's only got room now to catch up. And it actually looks like this Ember Spirit has, he's got the feeling. He's got the feeling he can go into the Battle Fury now just because of the comfort they have after these past couple of team fights. I've got to say though, the Jakiro's Ice Paths are so good up against this lineup. I didn't really think about it during the draft, but the Ice Path, the fact that all these Dire Heroes are like converging into one target, it sets up perfectly. It not only stuns the heroes that are already in there, but it also stops heroes like the Weaver, Chaos Knight, and Night Stalker, e even the Wind Ranger to some extent, from playing that kind of hit and run tactic, where they go in, they shackle, they wind run, they back off, and they just try and trade efficiently back and forth. The Ice Path splits everything up. He's you know, like a, a ranged Earthshaker in some, uh, in some respects. Mm -hmm. But Nemphi now, he's got free reign in the bottom lane. And there's nothing that Dai can do to come and stop this right now. They are uh, charging up onto Axmo at top lane. It'll take a while to get into there. And he's still got his ultimate. Oh, they're going to cancel You're not going to make though. it. He realizes he, he does have to shoot Kuchi. He's going to be able to get off the ultimate. What? Oh, dear. Okay, that followed him through the ultimate there. And uh, oh, is that is that a thing? Am I am I crazy? Nice block out. <laughs> Trixie's going to be able to stop that TP with a vacuum. And Night Stalker is done for. Uh, if you if you pop time lapse faster, right, where he's still in the animation of it, I'm presuming it just cancels it, right? And you have to redo it again. I'm unsure because that was because it felt like that was a very special scenario where Spirit Breaker had already kind of like in that teleport moment. But right when, as the time lapse goes down? When you use time lapse, does the animation and then he instantly jumps from one space to another, right? Mm -hmm. There's no period where he's off the map, like a Manta style or anything like that. Is not there? Ah. Oh. Maybe there isn't. I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure. But also because like they're so close like the the two points are so close together where yeah. he jumped from and two, still in nether strike range. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Awkward. All right, well, Wind Ranger is trying to finish up the Axmo doesn't really have much item progression since he went this early game build. Hasn't been getting that much farm, no kills since that dominating streak. Lena's getting a lot, though. Jesus. Our style playing a little bit like solo right now. Trying to split push. Finish up the Yule Scepter as fast as possible, considering how many times Lena has died. Getting a Yule Scepter by like 25 minutes is not bad. Volix? Alright, this smoke's gonna work out, or at least it should anyway. The Wind Ranger gets off oh the Wind Run, God. but they get the two man hit with a Sonic Wave. Now the ultimate goes down from Chaos Knight. He's gonna go on to Trixie, but he's right on top of the fire. That means he's gonna burn out. Yeah, you got the Darkseer kill with the help of the Lena, but that's not really worth it. Axmo running right through, pops the ultimate, and will back himself away. But they ended up losing two cores for the one core on Stark, and it's probably the one that needs the least. The Darkseer, who already has the mech and will complete the Blink Dagger in a short period of time, didn't mind dying there at all. Yeah, you're, you're gaining no value whatsoever. You're being pressured behind your Tier 2s to force into these fights. Well, like you said, Axmo has no progression. The, the Ember Spirit, he's just cruising to his Battle Fury at this point. And what does the Lina's Yules do for you as the game progresses? First well, through Flame Guard, it's, it's mm. good at sort of locking down the Spirit Breaker or Co-op. But you still don't have that synergy hero to bring the team fight together. It's all, it's like five heroes all going in as singular, uh, singular entities. There's no yeah. overruling kind of plan for what they're going to do in a team fight. It's like, okay, we focus this guy, you guys go on this guy. Whereas Stark, it's okay, we jump, vacuum wall, it's so much easier to execute. Whereas Dota 2 and I, it's all down to individual skill. Whether they can outplay Stark. Yeah, for me, it was like, oh, it's really effective versus the Queen of Pain, though. But when you already have the Orchid, you can actually interrupt the combo. And Axmo is going to die. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, man. That looked pretty nasty. 
So our man here uh, did go for the hand of Midas and working towards the BKB now. But uh, this is not looking great for Tota 2 and I. Boogie with a 21 minute Orchid. And this is it's after two, having like, no 12. farm at all. Yeah, he, and, and no kills at all. Like, apparently, Boogie has only been snagging assists for most of this game. Jump forward, they're going to go into RMN here with the Orchid. If they manage to control him long enough, yeah, they got this kill. The Orchid will pop him, and Boogie gets the kill. <laughs> Farther down, Valix is going to be held in place. And, uh, okay. Not quite worth the Chaos Knight, but it's something, I suppose. Well, Shadow Age is just running in there. Jesus. Silence on an empty. That Shackle Shot is not going to land. And if anything, they can actually turn this one now. Shadow Age gets a little bit more damage on Nemphi. If they overextend themselves, they may find themselves in a bit of a pickle. And Stark surge down from that uh, ramp area, but no. Stark don't want to risk it. Not yet, anyway. They just heard the dire side behind their tier 2 again. But now there's no tower left. And I go back to farming. It's just perfect synchronized movement here from Stark at this point. The threat of the Darkseer blinking and vacuuming the uh, the entire dire squad means that they can't group up and converge onto one target. And the rest of the Radiant, they, they just sort of back and forth, poking and prodding with everything they've got. They they don't need to commit. There's no reason for them to go uh, to go in deep on anything. It's Nymphing. He's he's got the entire game ahead of him. Level 13, now 14. Battle Fury completed at 22 and a half minutes, which I, I never thought I would say, you know? Mm. The Ember Spirit was put under a ton of pressure early on. The lanes weren't going amazingly. But at this rate, I don't know. He could bypass Manta and BKB completely. He could just go straight into the crit if he wanted to. They've played so yeah. well around the Ember Spirit, honestly. With the Blink Dagger, Vacuum, Ice Wall, they could just max out on damage on the Ember Spirit in one combination like that, and boom, the team fight's won. They are going to catch Tri- Oh! Ah, they're not going to catch Trixie. In fact, Trixie may just catch them. As he's going to try and find some sort of opportunity to cancel something. Oh, Jesus! Boogie! He just gets ripped apart by that Chaos Strike. Nemphi does a little bit of damage here, but Axmo actually gets a couple of bugs out and is going to go for uh, perhaps OKC at first. Gets the Urn out. They're just trying to run themselves away from the Chaos Knight at this point. And Axmo is here to slow them down. He knows Valix is not really the target. He's just going to be able to charge away. He knows that Jakiro is going to be the much easier kill. And it looks like, well, the power shot misses, but they'll get it eventually. Oh, good smoke. Good couple of pickoffs. But again, what value do they get from this? One lane of creeps? Do they try and go for Roshan? They don't have the fastest Rosh taking lineup. They've uh, got some good damage, but the contest should come here. I mean, vacuum walls ready for Trixie. They can TP the Queen of Pain in with Sonic Wave. Does Roshan target the bugs first? I think he does. Uh, I'm not sure. I I, I think because. Oh, they're too slow on the too no. slow on the contest. I guess Queen of Pain wasn't respawning quite fast enough for them to go in for it. Yeah, and it would be risky. If you lost two fights in a row like that and gave up the Aegis, you could just have the game snowball against you where you're still in a perfectly fine position right now, even with the Aegis going to the dire side. Because you know you're going to have this out-split push scenario where Dota 2 and I are going to have to commit to a five-man and then that leaves open the side lanes for you to be able to take a tier two and just wait out the Aegis. Or if they don't, if they try and split themselves up, then that's obviously effective versus the Aegis as well, where you can Dying potentially get those one or two man pickoffs that still allows you to control the game despite the extra life out there. So right now, Stark just five manning their way around Dire Signs. Not going to go for the contest here. Very odd they're choosing not to go for this team fight despite having the Aegis. RMN needs more farm. <laughs> he wants yeah. to finish his SNY. The Midas Chaos Knight. This is the second or third time now we've seen RMN. I, I'm pretty sure he's calling it, saying, I need to finish my item before we go and fight next. Where he's just trying to split push top, trying to get his farm on there. But there's still tier 1 towers mid and top for the Dire to go and take. 
So not only is it unusual that they're bypassing the actual team fight at bottom lane, but they're not gaining anything on the other lanes. You know, maybe a focus fire towards mid tier one could have secured them that one. Mm. There's also no vision really over on the radiant side of the map for them. They've got one Dar Observer Ward watching for movement between their Ancients and the Roche Pit. Oh, there we go. Ob's Ward gets placed straight down on top of a Remnant. Yeah, getting some aggressive vision up as much as possible at this point. Stark. I actually go for the uh, five-man smoke here in the middle lane, and they may be able to pick off our man. That would be a big, big-time kill, especially if they can initiate on him without giving off any of his abilities like that uh, Phantasm. Oh, wow. Um, hmm. I mean, it's it it works with Geminate now. Yeah, I was, but I was thinking about that. It's still, like, why wouldn't you go Tessellator? It takes advantage of the low armor on the Ember Spirit traditionally. The Queen of Pain, very low armor as well. You can purge Flame God with your Scepter. Yeah, is that really worth it though? Can you do it with Diffusal Blade as well? You can, right? Yeah. Yeah. But is that worth it? I mean, you're, you're basically setting up weakening the hero's magic shell when you are a hero that only is going to do physical damage. For the most part. Right? So, yeah, you may be setting up your ally to be able to burst down the Ember Spirit, but I still think just going for physical damage would be the better play. Is there anything else that Purge is really Surge. effective against? Surge. But that's like at an end of fight when you're trying to chase people down. Yeah, and he could still TP out. Right? So it, it's, then, it doesn't even allow you, like, solo pick off against the Darkseer. And then that's ignoring the entire split push and building destruction part of Desolator, right? Yeah. Oh, they're going to go on the Wind Ranger here now. This is the Aegis. Nice Ice Path. The group up. Oh, that vacuum with a sonic wave over the top. That'll be two down. RMN going to take a fall now. And here comes the Wind Ranger round two, but quickly gets taken out by Stark as they just man mode forward. What a beautiful combination. Where's that charge going? Oh, it's going up the top lane. They don't have vision of anyone else. Wait, is it? Oh, it's to mid. Oh. Yeah. I was looking and thinking, hang on a second, where's he going? Where's he going? He wanted the cat's ball in the middle lane. He's got a BKB now. Fat ass spirit breaker. Yeah, he's just going to go straight in there. The BKB, and there's nothing they can do to stop him. So his tar charge is going to be really effective. The Dark Seer Illusions are charging down bottom lane. Oh, they'll expire before they hit the tier 3, though. One hit on the creep wave. No luck for... Never lucky. SNY Chaos Knight. Hmm. Do you think that... I don't know. I, it kind of feels like when you have low amount of farm and you go Hannah Midas, right? SNY is such an early to mid game focused item. And he got it by like, what, 27, 26 minutes or something like that. I still feel like... Maybe even, I don't know, what other stat item would you go f instead of SNY that's not as expensive? Drums? Drums. Yeah, go drums into BKB maybe. But then what does the BKB give you against Sonic Wave, Nether Strike? Yeah, I and guess it it's just uh, the ice path that. Yeah. It doesn't affect really your illusions annoying. either. And I think that's what he's looking at mm. here, thinking my illusions are such an integral part of our team fight. Yeah. I need to buff them up. Then what about Armlet? Because that's, so that's another dot. build that we usually see. Too much dot. I guess if you just want to buff up your illusions and armlet and pop them, but uh, I don't know. It, it's a really tough decision. I think he would have loved to have, you know, dr tread drums S and Y and not go for the Midas, but he mm -hmm. felt compelled. Yeah. To actually go into the Midas just because of how far behind they fell in that lane. Oh, Stark. They see everything. It's the ward behind them. Uh-oh, the Orchid on to RMN before any of this starts. They're going to be able to get the Ice Path out. Looks like Valix is going to die, but it's a well-worthy trade-off, especially if they're able to get more here as Lina's definitely going down. Looks like the Wind Ranger. No, nope, oh, it's going to be caught. Nice setup there from Nempy, able to get the Fist Chains stopped and the TP out. And he'll actually be rewarded with the kill. So what a great initiation. I mean, they had the DD in the bottle. They had uh, an Orchid to start things out. And the most critical hero of all, I think, RMN. you got to stop that Phantasm. Look at how important deep wards are here. When you know the die need to farm the jungle and they need to get some kind of value out of the map, top lane is a good place to push in.
just because you have that safety where you can kind of split push into the tier one and then fall back through the jungle, which is what they looked like they were planning to do with uh, pretty much everyone all based around that top lane. Mm -hmm. Stark just one step ahead with the ward down and now another one up on this ramp watching for the tier three movements. There's nowhere safe. The entirety of basically the dire base and just outside of it is warded up here by the Radiant. Yeah, as long as they keep that middle lane pushed out, there's no easy way for the dire sign to, um, to get out outside of their base without notice. And then Shards coming out. And this is really where they're able to set things up quite easily. With all these aggressive wards, you see these heroes pushing out. The Spirit Breaker has his opportunity to be able to charge as they pass through the wards. They keep vision, and full rotations come out from Stark. That was a Lincoln's on the Ember Spirit as well. No Yules dispelling off his Flame Guard this time. So he's not going to be shut down anytime soon. Yeah, definitely not. And Trixie's actually going back into a BKB as well. So Greaves, Blink, BKB. Even more difficult. He has been annoyed by the shackles from time to time. Yeah, the silence from the Night Stalker coming in sometimes. I can I can see it. Let's not forget, we don't have um, a a physical damage base build on this Weaver. So the the BKB has more value against the Weaver in that regard. You know, because you're able to ignore the defusal hits. Looks like he's going Manta on the Weaver. I can only guess with this defusal build. Mm-hmm. Unsure how I feel. I, I I am not convinced that this is the correct build. <laughs> it's if it was versus an Omni Knight, I'd be all in. But as it is, we'll see. Roshan, that's not going to be coming up for another minute and a half, friends. Stark, you might as well leave this Roshan pit because uh, you're just wasting your time. You know, there was a change recently, I, I don't even know how recently, that I didn't really pay attention to. Warlock golems, you can't purge them anymore. <laughs> Someone told me that last night, I was like, huh? I feel like I didn't know that unless it happened in like the last, the last patch, in which case I didn't know that. Was it the last patch? I don't know. It just super, super confused me. What about Aghanim's Weaver? <laughs> what for? <laughs> Bring the Chaos Knight back? I mean, I'm not saying for this game, but... Have you seen it in action? I have yet to even see it. No, I've not even seen it in pubs. Imagine a world where... The play that wins you the game is you and another core dies. You're the Weaver. You have a refresher. You both buy back and you hit time lapse on him and yourself in order to instantly get back <laughs> in the fight. <laughs> but it's like the same as Phoenix Ags upgrade. I have not seen that. Oh, I have. I know I've, it has I, been played. I've not seen it. Though. Yeah, I, I I've seen it. I played around with it. I I don't know. I think it's I think it's uh, not as bad as people say. I mean, it's it's definitely not great. <laughs> It's definitely not great, but it's not total garbage. Let's put it that way. Charge in from Valix, almost getting him there. And now Valix is stuck in the trees, like a sad cow. Oh, poor little guy. It's just, and <laughs> how can the space cow be, you know, held in by Trapped. such, such earthly boundaries as trees? How did the diet break out of the boundaries put forward by Stark, though? Yeah, there's still all these wards out. I'm gonna be dying soon, but I, I mean, if they just let this game go late, I think they they can still have an advantage. The problem is simply going to be net worth. Like Stark has such a large net worth advantage that one of your cores is not go going to be effective. I'm not sure who that's going to be. It kind of depends on who gets initiated. Well, that's the thing. Do we even view Wind Ranger as an actual? Forced to be reckoned with in these team fights. Aghanim's Blink, usually a great combo for the Wind Ranger, but now mm -hmm. forced into a BKB over a Daedalus or something like that. She's just kind of kind of meh in team fights. I don't think that's the build. <laughs> she's not offering anything. I'm not sure any of the dire I, I'm I'm looking at the dire side item builds and going, I'm not sure if that's it. 
That's not it. I, I think you just have to go damage on the Wind Ranger. I mean, the Chaos Knight has already shown himself to be the target quite frequently of Stark. So you got to start amping up your own damage so you can be a threat um, if the Chaos Knight is immediately disabled. Shadow A is going to be taken out by double disables, double ultimates. Pretty easy kill that allows them to go and take Roshan. They know what's up. It's been a, a late Roshan spawn. And Stark will claim that Aegis for themselves. Just Aegis, no cheese, just game. Uncontestable. Onstar is literally sitting behind his tier 3 wondering where to go. The rest of his team desperately just trying to split push across. I mean, even if you do get the Aghanims, it'll be nice, but it won't be the same. You've got that Lincolns on the Amber Spirit. Everyone else is, like, tanky. pretty tanky. Like, the, the Jakiro is the squishiest hero here, and it's only because we, we don't see him building any sort of tank item. He just has the four staff. And even he has 1,200 HP. Chaos Knight split push. It's not real. No, not against uh, not against Chaos Knight. Well, that's his Phantasm gone for uh, two minutes now. Yeah, they didn't even take the tier one tower. So, uh, Do they want to try and kill Memphi? He's got a Lincoln. There's, there's no way. I do think they do need to try and be aggressive. Obviously, Nemphi is not the right hero to be aggressive on right now. Kill but the Queen of Pain or something like that coming from behind. Six but it, it is getting to the point where some kind of desperation smoke gank is required from the Dire. They've pushed all their lanes out, which is a, which is a great start. You know, They've got them down towards the river. Mm -hmm. But if they obtain that, and it took them, what, a good minute and a half, two minutes to actually push them out that hard, and then do nothing with it, then what was the point? Go Nemphi, by the way. This guy hasn't died yet. Just now noticing that. 4, 0, and 11. And he'll have a data list quite soon. Absolute beast. Considering the potential lockdown, you know, one mistake against Chaos Knight, you get hit by the Chaos Bolt, you're probably man. dead. Uh, he's going to be caught here and he's bursted dead. down. And with that, Stark push uphill. I mean, they have the Aegis still. It's a four versus five advantage. There's buyback on the Chaos Knight, but still no Phantasm. High ground defense here again. Like I was saying before, it's all single oh, target. Oh, they got Axmo. The Lincolns actually helps them survive, but in not long enough. As Shackleshot controls Valix, they will be able to get that kill, but a four-man vacuum wall. Oh, man. There was only an Ice Path or uh, perhaps some better criticals out for that Ember Spirit. Could have taken better advantage of that situation. They did force a buyback, though. That was, uh, that was the Weaver. Meticulous play from Stark. Honestly, they go up high ground, they force buyback. The Chaos Knight luckily didn't have to pop his. But the Weaver, buyback time lapse, then vacked back into the wall vacuum. Just disgusting stuff. And how, uh, how, do, you even, <laughs> how do you even break out? Well, it's going to be even more difficult. They just saved a... D -D. Oh, never mind. I was going to say, I, th I thought he had the bottle on him. So I was like, okay, two minutes from now, you know, you can actually force a fight with the Spear Breaker coming back up. Doesn't look like they should be able to, though, in the next 20 seconds. Uh, he traded away his bottle for the gem. Does have the data list, though. Think Dagger Jakiro. No Yule Scepter, which is oftentimes what's paired up with the Jakiro. Um, in the Blink Dagger. Blink Dagger Yules. You can always... Shikuchi before, but you can't get off Time Lapse. You can't get off Phantasm or anything. You can get off Wind Run. But there's no hero that actually takes advantage of the the instant cast that's effective versus Ice Path. Yeah. So this just means the Dire Side don't have... Like, they're going to be really susceptible to a uh, potential Blink Ice Path combo. Oh, if they could have seen that Weaver. Yeah, they could potentially be GG. No if only buyback. Valix had the gem. Oh, this Move is forward. it. This is time. Shackleshot doesn't latch. It's a decent slight. They're just going to stay low ground and keep spamming out slight chains. 
Have OKC us spam out some uh, liquid yeah. fire as well against that tier 3 tower. Uh, the some heroes point, are forced back. At some point, the Dyer have to go back to Fountain to regen, or they have to commit into the fight. They're just going to keep clearing out these waves, but they're losing HP on that tower time and time again. Look at this liquid fire blink back. Chipping away at this. And you can see RMN's positioning right now. He's coming in from the right hand side. They want to commit next wave, I think. If they could somehow get an MP, does anyone have a blink dagger? No. I, okay, they, they've got the blink dagger and the wind ranger. They need to make some sort of play where Chaos Knight and wind ranger both go on MP at the, around the same time. Problem is they just don't have enough. The vacuum all over the ice pass. Sonic Wave goes out. Doesn't actually finish anybody off. And OKC is going to die on the left-hand side. Two Axmo. Night Stalker also traded away there. Yule Scepter will be able to prevent that Orchid. And uh, Trixie on his way out here. RMN looking for his target. Will be able to get it. Boogie held in. Two seconds stun. And they will be able to take away that Aegis. Axmo, though, held in place. Is locked down long enough to be able to get the kill onto him. He's down for 90 seconds. And Stark will go back to pushing in. Unfortunately... Dota 2 and I, they saw kind of an opening where they were able to push out and maybe get something because of the failed combination that didn't kill anybody. It still forced them back to Fountain, though. Uh, that's the scary thing. You, you pop your ulties, you get that big combo off, you don't kill anybody, but you force two of them down to 200 HP so they can't re-engage and get back into the fight because of the lack of sustain here from the Dire. And even though the Chaos Knight illusions, they were crushing people. They killed the Queen of Pain, they were just destroying people left and right. There was no one to keep them held in place. The Wind Ranger Shackle didn't latch onto anything behind the co-op. Still, Boogie did drop. And Nymphie, he was full HP. He just kept Slight, Chains, Remnants, spamming. That's all he was doing the entire fight. He even picked himself up a Daedalus like mid-fight as well. So now he's got that big old crit stick. And our man... Halberd. Yeah. That's I very don't know interesting. If that's the item. <laughs> Uh, I, I I feel like I'm just gonna repeat this phrase uh, this phrase until not sure that's the build the dire either win the game and upset my predictions about not being the item builds or they lose it and you were right shackle shot oh that vacuum over the top three heroes slide of fist oh what a combo that brings pretty much everyone low half of them have to go back and half of them are in the grave already look, look at the Lena <laughs> look at the Lena dying to the CK illusion. Oh, and now he's going to just straight up die to Alex. Ultimate goes out. Gets the kill. That'll be the melee Rex. No buyback on the Lena or the Night Stalker. They still have their cores up. I say still. Axmo just now reviving. That's the Lincolns, but he's got to be careful. The Chains doesn't care about Lincolns, and the Ice Path doesn't care about Lincolns either. They actually control him pretty well. Nemphi pull him back up. Oh, they're not going to be able to get it. Lotus Orb will also protect him with the four staffs. And now they've locked RMN in. He's not escaping. He's down for 70 seconds. And Stark go right back into the Dire Side base, taking control of another laner Axe. Well, I think this is, uh, this is tipping point. Yeah. It's been looking this way for quite some time. But Stark, cool, calm, collected. Played patiently. Now they're reaping the rewards. Second laner axe, and this is surely game. But I think the Dyer just want that, you know, one last flashy play where they run in and try and get a couple of kills. It's the uh, it's the CIS way. All right. Well, we'll see what Dota 2 and I can do in the next three or four. Oh, never mind. I was like, well, we could have one more good Roshan <laughs> fight that you can have now. No, they decide a uh, little bit belatedly to uh, to call it. And that means Stark will be moving on. They're going to be the next team moving forward uh, to face up against Team Empire. That'll be an interesting matchup. Of course, that's for tomorrow. And, uh, coming up next, the match we've been waiting for. CIS Rejects up against No Logic Gaming. Yeah, I'll take a look at the bracket real quick. CIS Rejects versus No Logic Gaming. And then the winner moves on to face up against the winner of the last match of the night, which is Team Bad English versus Alliance. So, things should be... Uh, things should be heating up over the weekend. There you go. Yeah. It's chilly here, so I bloody well hope so. Any predictions? For later tonight? Or no, for the for, entire tournament? No, for, for Stark versus Empire. Now that we've seen these two teams win, gotten a little bit of handle. I think Empire have too much class for them. Mm. Like, that was Stark playing patiently and playing well against a very sort of ragtag team. You know, that was a band of uh, 
they are like the serious rejects rejects kind, <laughs> kind of team. I yeah, think they, is the way to look at it, right? Are. Yeah. Um, that was Stark playing well against them, but mm -hmm. I think Empire will play like Stark played against them against Stark. You know, <laughs> they're, they're, they'll just be able to sit back <laughs> it'll, and it'll, let Stark play their own game and just. So what you're saying is it goes Dota 2 and I Stark Empire. Yeah, is that what you're saying? All right, I can I can dig it. All right, guys, short little break. We'll be back with our third game of the night, as we said earlier. CIS Rejects versus No Logic Gaming. <laughs> 